Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus, come and teach us your holiness. Come and teach us your sanctification. Teach us your stature. Awesome. Wonderful. Awesome man. We bless you. Oh, Mama Muhi Hetasa. Beautiful upon Zion. Standing. The Lamb of God. Oh, righteous and holy Lamb. We worship you. We bless you. Brothers, you help us to give us access, Lord, to you tonight and help us to feast on your person. We want to feast on you, on your person, on your person. We want to foam and head are open, open, open up your heart to us, Jesus. Shaman Autry Spirit, we want to eat you, we want to feast on you, we want to eat, eat you, eat you. Oh, what, what you are made of, of those awesome, blessed, anointed, holy substances which make you up, Jesus. Come and be bread to us. May we feast. Share yourself upon the table, our table. Divide yourself to us and help our heart. Help our heart. May we, may we gain access, Lord. Oh, thank you. Help us to see. Help us to see your holiness, your sanctification. By mercy tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mama Raha Papona. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Maranos de Pranos Siska to Tadiz. Labranota Fenhoske. Tamis Awi. We pray, Lord, for access. We want to access heaven where those things are kept. Give us access tonight. Utterance. Grace. Grace. Utterance. Ministry of understanding. Wisdom, Lord. Oh, thank you. Tomene Kaskota. Tomana Eldo, Pa Odo, Aldredo, Sabredo, Aminegodo, Moki, Megre Pacos. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Jesus. Soprano, Soprahatos, Kesko. Thank you, Jesus. Let's be quiet now. Let's be quiet now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. Lord Jesus, we make supplication tonight. We're asking, Lord, for access even into the even to your place of ministry, Lord, where you have kept, where you have kept your holy things, your holy substances. Come and help our hearts tonight by possess our vessel with your mercy. Possess mercy which is being accessed, mercy which will turn to 
access, access for our heart, for former Eroshihama to, to access your office, your anointed world, your anointed place, place of, of where you have stored your things, Lord. Come and give us access. We are praying, help our heart, help our hearts, help our hearts tonight, help our hearts tonight, help our hearts tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. We give you praise. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. Mm. Yes, Lord. I end my spirit, the spirit of the Lord, say, I bring eyes, I bring eyes, I bring eyes for to see the bread. I bring eyes for to see the bread. I bring eyes, I give eyes, I'm giving eyes, I am giving eyes for to see the bread. I am giving eyes for to see the bread and to eat the bread. I am giving eyes. I bring my eyes. I bring even my eyes. My eyes, my eyes, my eyes. I have come to give eyes. I have come to give eyes. I have come to give eyes. Eyes, eyes for my bread. Eyes for my bread. I have come. I have come. I am come to give eyes. I am come to give eyes. I am come to give eyes. I am taking away eyes and I am giving eyes. I am giving eyes. I take eyes. I give eyes. I take eyes, I give eyes, I give eyes for to see the anointed life, for to see the anointed life, for to see the anointed life, the life of the mountain. I have come to give eyes for the mountain, the eyes of the life of the mountain. I have come to give eyes for my sight, eyes for my life, eyes for my life. I am come to give eyes, eyes, eyes eyes for to eat my bread for to see my bread for to eat my bread for to come to my life i'm breathing eyes for my life i give eyes for my life say it say it i say say it say it say it i have come that you may say it i have come that you may say it i have come that you may say it i have come to help you to say it i have come to help to say it i have come to help to say it i am come to help for to give eyes for to give eyes I'm come to say it that they may have eyes. Thank you. Glory to Jesus. <clears throat> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's have our seats. Thank you, Father.
Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Makatase prete vinashi kate li bavatosi pate li genota frete te li prehosi kate menoshi kate bayadoshta le papante li oso fente li agada basi kete te te reti vento tosi kali adabashante li onosta o makati vrente le mote li kante li brekate li for we have sent we are sent we are sent even with our eyes that the eyes as we behold the Father and causes us to worship. We have come to give the eyes that you would worship. We have come to give that same eyes we have come to impact. We have come to impact for we were sent for to come to give our eyes. We were sent to come to give our eyes that as we behold him that sits on the throne and our souls and our heart and everything responds to him that is seated based on our side. We have come to give sight. We have come to impact our eyes. We have come to impact our eyes that you may offer up service, that you may offer up service, that you may offer up service, the eyes for service, the eyes for our service, the eyes for which we serve. We have come to give eyes for you to serve. Just as we serve, we have come to give the eyes for to serve. As we serve, as we see, we serve. As we see, we serve. We have come to give eyes that you may serve. Thank you. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. I bring my savour and my bread here. My savour, my bread is here. It is here. It is open to you even as you go individually. My savour, my bread is open. My savour, my bread. My savour, my bread. I bring bread. 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 Bread for life. Bread for life. Bread for life. Bread life. Bread my life. Bread my life. I break bread. 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 Savo bread. My savo my bread. I bra bread. Bread. I bring bread. 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 
breath, I bring breath. I bring breath for life. I bring breath for my life. My life, my breath, my life, my breath. I bring my breath. You will begin to see Savo. You will see Savo. You will see my Savo. You will see my Savo. I am bringing my breath and my Savo. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Fresh Pahano. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Take a dead step. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Makati vrepeti vreteta li batalia vento sotelia. Bratetelia magatelia botio botio bentio botiganti beti brete botigata. Vrete temiga botia. Emio momo betio. Eme botio. Eme gete ventolio botio. Evan batalia meto botio. E gatabe and botio. Emianto botio. I got even to botio. Meliante botio. I bought you. I bought you. Eleventh, even I bought you, even I, your Lord, bought you. I bought you, I bought you, I bought you. I have bought you and you are mine. I bought you and you are mine. I bought you and you are mine. You are mine, you are mine. For even those eternal doors, those doors within you that are not yet opening, I have come to open. For my power and my stronger has come. For begin to open up, begin to open up. For I have bought you, I have bought you you and you would open up. I have come. I have come in my strength and in my power in my victory. I have come for I have come and you open up. I have come to open up doors. I have come to open up doors within you that are not allowing me. I have come to open up doors. I am come in my power. I have come in my power. I come in power. I come in my power to open, to break to break and to lose to break and to lose for you are called up I call you up I call you up I call you up I say come up I say come up I say come up I say come up for your journey is an upward journey I have come to break the bonds the bonds that hold you down to the earthly life that hold you down to the earthly life I come in my power for I have bought you for to raise you up for to come to your journey the upward life the upward way it is by my power it is by my power and I have come in my strong hand for to come you up
Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Haba Mahota. Glory to Jesus. Thank you. My kapal of Hashkik Rahab was she. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you. Oh, Mama Ho. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, Papa Bala Baba Bahushka. Shapara hoste pohota mukra hamota salibra haltas hamaho maha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ma poste praha posto pastas pasatanaha talu Christo sama ishta tos. Caliprosia, come on out here, Toma. Thank you. La sesto, la prahanota. Thank you, Vashti. Cover Omarov for pos ante luveta zuste. Talia da Bosta, Brecatalia da Bazate, Veneca Santo lo Bosateria dosso parte menita, Regateria bante lega de Boschata barasta, Ratatari benioso parte venate ligata, Ribebebebe benoso papa vantaria da Boschataria gado, Ribantanio sonteria tanion tion 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 tion, Elebecaton tion 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 the trone, Evan. Turn to your throne, turn to your throne, turn to your throne. Gatalia bovateria basontina got turn to your throne. Turn to the throne for the throne calling. The throne calling. I need a seated on the throne calling. He call it. He call it. He call it. He call it. Turn to your throne for his call is the call of your soul. It is the call of your soul. He's calling you. Come to your throne. Come to your throne for it is your destiny.
destiny. It is your ordained destiny. For even before you were formed, it was ordained for you to sit on the throne. Come to the throne. It is calling you. Your destiny is calling you. It is calling you. It is calling you. Your throne, my throne, my throne. I'm seated with my Father in my throne. That where I am, that where I am, you may be. I call you up. I call you up. I call you up. Turn to mercy. Turn to grace. Turn to mercy. Turn to grace. For my throne of mercy is open for to call you up. It is open to call you up. It is open to turn you. To turn you. To turn you. To turn you to the throne. It is the throne of thrones. It is the throne of thrones. It is the throne that no throne can be likened to or compared to or can even size. It is the highest. It is the throne that is not of this world. It is the throne that is not of this realm. It is the throne that is a throne of mercy. It is a throne of mercy. It is a throne of mercy. I call you up to mercy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you. All we receive for your ministry tonight. We know you are here to do so much more, even so much more than we can understand. You have, you have already blessed us. You've brought the blessing down. The blessing is here. It's here. It's here. It's upon us. And so, Lord, with, with thanksgiving, Lord, we just submit, bring our heart under you to do this work. All that you have said, all you have prophesied, all you have spoken, Lord, bring them to pass by your own by your own way, your own spirit, by your own ministry, minister to us, help us, help us, bring leadership, guidance, direction to us. Thank you, our Father. We bless your name. <coughs> we praise you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Good evening to you. Um, okay, let's just open our Bibles. Amen. It's, I would like to use very hard because I'm seeing the message, but um, there, are, there are many doors of access. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to, um, to access it, but um, praise God. Uh, let's see. Let's just let's look at our Lord Jesus um, in Psalm. 45. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Psalm 45, if you're there, say amen. So, um, verse 6, it says, Thy, thy throne, O God, is forever. Amen. Is forever and ever, and the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. For, for thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness, and therefore God thy God he hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness <coughs> above thy fellows. Praise God. So, um, if uh, uh, thank you, if God, thy God, has anointed him with the oil of gladness, thank you. He says that that anointing is an oil that is above his fellows. Amen. So. It means that he has fellows who are also anointed. If, if not, he won't use the word above. So if you're saying that he's anointed, if you use the word above, above means relative to something that is beneath or 
something that's some something in this place, some someone or people who he called fellows. Uh, that so he is has come into because of his throne. They anointed him because of his throne. So this, what they are describing here is the certain kind of, it's not, it's, it's privilege. There's a kind of privilege that he came into by virtue of, uh, as, of, as of moving beyond a particular place as verse 2 speaks about it as fairness that he became fairer than the children of men uh, praise God the fairness here is talking about the uh, his Glory and beauty, that's the actual, right, the, the composition of fairness here is glory and beauty. When you say, you are fair, the Song of Solomon said, thou art fair, my love. He was talking about what the quality that attracts a lover to who he loves, which is, he calls it fairness, fairness, praise God. And so, they are speaking here, this psalmist or whoever is writing this psalm is, is saying that, that his heart is indicting a good matter and is, he said, I speak of the things which I have made touching the king and my tongue is the pen of a ready writer and he then began to speak of those things and he said that, that thou art fair so it's the, his fairness he was talking about this is a psalm that came out of the a sighting of Jesus at a particular, is like at a particular point uh, in a, a, the time where what things that happened to Jesus is like taking a snapshot in the spirit of a dealing that occurred to, in Jesus that at the point where he moved above his fellows. Do you see, are you seeing that? It's the point where in the spirit he was able to move where? Above his fellow. So he's describing that uh, that is an upward increase of Jesus. It's an advancement of Jesus. It is a time of him pushing higher into a, a, a place of greater privilege by virtue of increase in what he calls fairness. So if I want to summarize the word fairness here, I'll say fairness is appeal to God. The fairness is the appeal of a soul to God. How fair is the soul? And I said that it is, has to do with how glorious and how beautiful that soul is. Praise the Lord. So, so here he's speaking about Jesus and Verse 2, that thou art fairer than the children of men. So he was speaking about when Jesus became fairer than the, than the estate, when he, what he calls the children of men. Uh, he's talking about the brotherhood that is in the, in, in the, nature of men. Do you see that? It's like a brotherhood that is in the nature of men. It's a place where Jesus ascended. He, Jesus proceeded from that place out of the... And we know that when it comes to the children of men that the fairest, the fairest image of children of men is the image of Christ. Does that make sense? That the fairest, that was the most beautiful a man can be, is Christ. That Christ is the most beautiful, and Christ is the most glorious that a man can be. That 
A man cannot, a, a man cannot wear anything more than Christ. That there is no more beautiful state, no fairer state of man than Christ. Praise the Lord. But this was talking about Jesus becoming fairer than the world, the children of men. That was Jesus coming into a place of a greater beauty. Praise the Lord. And a greater glory. And it says that grace is poured into thy lips, therefore, at God, then what? Blessed thee forever. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore, had God blessed thee for what? Forever. Amen. Now, the, 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 the pouring of grace into, into Jesus' lips. No, there was the, there's the pouring of grace into his lips. He's talking about grace from God. There is a grace that is in God. God has a, a special grace but that he can pour, amen, into what? The leaves. I don't want to go into that place. So I won't lose my thought. But you see the, the point, this point, let's, let's try and pick the attitude of, of these verses, what they are talking about here. They said, they now began to, after they say God had blessed thee forever, that word uh, blessing forever is everlasting. Do you see that? That is um, Psalm 133. Where you know there's a place where he commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Do you remember? That's how Psalm 133 ended. He commanded the blessing, for there he commanded the blessing, and even life forevermore. So that blessing which he commanded, and what he calls even life forevermore, is so it is commanded. There's what he called the blessing, then there is the and it's still a blessing. Life forevermore is even life forevermore. It's also the blessing, but the blessing of life forevermore. Are you getting that? So that blessing is what he's talking about here when he's saying because of his fairness, then God blessed him forever. Uh, praise God. Because of how fair he arose higher than the children. He became fairer than the children of men. Therefore, God did what? God blessed him, what, forever. Then based on that, they now began to speak about um, some kind of movement, which he will, he, began, he will begin to take. That at this point, when you, once you receive this blessing, amen, there is a new, there is a kind of, um, there is a kind of, of, um, there is a kind of, uh, there's something that it confers. Uh, amen. Just to let you know, this is not the message. I, just, I want to describe, we're going to describe something from top down. There's something, we must describe that man. Uh, then his, his description will give us the context of the, of the realm be, below him. That is, that's the realm which, that which God has instituted through which men will ascend into him. Praise the Lord. So, well, is it fine for us to just look at him a little bit? Yes, sir. Amen. So, they are, they are now saying that after, because of the blessing, they now said, okay, guard thy sword upon thy, thy thigh, O most word, O most mighty. That word, most mighty, is another title of Jesus. It's a, it's a, it's a title of Jesus. The most mighty is talking about might in the most holy place. Praise God. It's another, it's another kind of might where in the most holy place that so who is this most mighty? This being who they call most mighty is the Lord strong and mighty. Amen. And who else again is the Lord mighty in battle? That's who they are describing here. That the, the Lord strong and mighty and the Lord, what, mighty in battle, according to what chapter, Psalm chapter, what, 24. Praise God. Let's read that, Psalm 24. Glory to God. You can just flip your Bible and then we'll, we'll come back. Um, so Psalm 24, you're saying that 
they, they're describing, it's the same. All these, these chapters are talking about the same place. This, the Bible, the Holy Spirit spent a lot of time to, to, to clarify that region. The, the region of, of that of raising man and, and how man will ascend and then arrive, will enter into the realm of God. Entering, because entering into God is the great victory for man. There's something happens when man can access God's world. When, God, when man can access God's world, when that happens, something happens. God has the feeling like he has come back to the beginning. That he has, he will have a feeling like he has healed all the, all the, all the, that, the distraction and the diversion that happened. The error of Genesis, that error of Genesis that led man away, that took man away. God will feel that he has gotten man back. Are you seeing that that place or is a great victory? That place, that realm of having access into the, the world of God. is also breakthrough into the presence of God. That breakthrough into God's presence is a, is a great thing. So the, the Holy Spirit, by, by, by my mercy, he, he used the scripture to describe that place a lot. So, so we, we can see that where they're speaking about this, this being here in Psalm chapter 24, they are first spoken about who will ascend into the hill of the Lord. They said he will stand where? In his holy place. He that has clean hand and he that has what? The pure heart. So ultimately, the pure heart is what guarantees the standing in that what, holy place. Now, you see, right from that holy place, that's where the, that's where the, the, the posture of standing begins. That posture. Man doesn't, when I talk of standing before God, that this, the kind of standing that God acknowledges is, begins first from the, that, the, the victory in Zion, when the soul has climbed Zion and you stood, then you, that's the first standing before God. That's the first time God says, ah, wow, a man has stood. So because you have been able to stand, let's bring you into there's a, a place where they, they call it the congregation of the mighty. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? It's called the what? The, uh, it said that God what? Stands. Do you see that now? When the place where God stands is not his throne. God doesn't stand in his throne. God stands. But there's a realm where God stands. That realm is his presence. And that realm is among the... What psalm is that? He standed in the congregation of the mighty and the judges among the gods. Uh, praise God. Amen. So it's the, the place where God stands is that same region. So it's the, it's the realm of standing, the place of standing in heaven before God. So and everybody who stands there must be mighty. Nobody can stand there without being mighty. That's Psalm 82. Read Psalm 82, verse 1. You can read it, please. Yes. Psalm 82, verse 1. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. Yes. He judged among the gods. Among the gods. Praise God. So God standeth in the word congregation. So it means that people who are mighty, that there is a, they, you, when you will. It's like there's a congregation on top of Zion. But when you cross Zion and you move into the presence of God, you enter into another congregation who are a congregation of, of beings who are mighty, who are not men, who are gods. Do you, do, are you getting the difference? So what makes them God? They are become fairer than the children of men. That's the place of that Jesus he, he, that when he became fairer, he entered into that place. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? So, so that's why they will tell him that to guide thy sword upon thy thigh. After talking about his fairness, they now began to tell him, okay, begin to guide thy sword upon thy thigh. Oh, most mighty, you're now mighty. Are you getting what I'm saying? So in this place here, they, you're now, they now began to speak concerning the... 
um, of course, who are, who are sending to the heel of the Lord and who will stand, right? You see, standing first. So anybody who will stand, God's criteria for admitting souls into his presence is that such is so because his presence is a place of beings who are mighty to stand. They have, they have might to stand. It's not easy to stand in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. But the test that, men is, that God can bring someone into that place is that that person must have first of all stood in Zion. Are you seeing that? It must have first of all done what? Stood where? It must have first of all stood in, in Zion. This word standing is, is, a, is a spirit word. It means something. Right? The word standing is what? Is a spirit word. Is a, someone who stands is somebody who, is not, who doesn't hide from winds. Somebody is somebody, someone who stands is a tree. You have become a tree. That's a stature. You see how a tree stands up. Have you seen a tree sitting down before? Or lying down? Right? A tree. So somebody who has, who's able to stand is somebody who has arrived at that place who they, they, they say they will make them trees of righteousness. The word planting of the Lord. That's Isaiah chapter 62. The 61 or 62. Amen. It will make them trees of righteousness and then the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Praise the Lord. So, so you see that thing called standing. You see, in, go later, go to the scripture. Amen. It says that, therefore, take all the whole armor of God. Amen. So, that whole, taking all the whole armor of God is, nobody can pick that armor unless you've come, you are mighty. So what, actually, when Jesus became fair, what they now began to tell him is, now take on this armor. The, what they call the whole armor of God is not the armor of Christ. Christ has his own armor. But there is what the, you call the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God cannot be carried except his, his soul is mighty. Uh, do you understand what I mean? And what is the purpose of the armor? He said, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to, to do what? So that you might quench the words of the devil and that so I might, you might be able to stand in the evil day. Please read that, please. That's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Sorry, 6 verse what? 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. It's 13. Later on, yes. So therefore, 6, 13. Therefore, <coughs> praise God. <coughs> um, wherefore, take unto you wherefore. the whole armor of God. Take unto you, yes that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Yes. And having done all, all to stand. To stand. Stand therefore. Stand therefore. Having your loins girt about. To talk about. Are you seeing standing? That you might be able to withstand in the evil day. You have to withstand and then having done all to stand. So there's, there are things that, there are all, there are things that must be done to stand. To stand. There's, to stand, because to stand in that evil day, the evil day is the day where mighty men show their strength. Men who have, who have, who have developed might over time. Praise God. Are you seeing all those armor? Therefore, take on the whole armor. Are you seeing those, all those things they mention as armor? Those armor, to take up the armor is not easy. So that, at that time, they are, they, are, they are not telling you, go and buy an armor. Or go and, don't just be like that, go and look for armor. Or there's a time when that armor will be, cre- will be created. Those, all those things they mention as the armor of God is a process. That, so the reason for how those armor came about is when that soul was doing all. So it means very clear that the all he needs to do to stand is to acquire the armor. 
which you will need to take up. So then wherefore, you need to take up the whole world, the whole armor. So, so you see, that is the exact same thing that they were telling to him in Psalm 45. Praise God. In Psalm 45 verse 2, Psalm 45 verse 2, it says, Thou art fairer than the children of men, and grace is poured into thy leaves. Therefore God has blessed thee forever. Verse 3, it's not telling him, Guard thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty. So he just picked a, a particular piece of the armor, which is the, what they call the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Do you see that? It's the, the sword of the spirit, which is what? The, which is the word of God. Now, why is he talking about the word of God? It's because he's it's, 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 it's speaking an aspect, probably the most vital aspect of the armory, right? Which is the word. It's now a word in his, in his, in his mouth. <laughs> Are you going to? So, so, sword is word. Just remove S from sword. You get word. It's the same thing. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, the sword, the sword of the spirit. So, sword, S, S word, spirit word is the sword of the spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, so sword is word. So, that's why right after grace was poured into his lips, they told him, take up thy sword. So, that grace that was poured into his lips is the word of God. Do you understand what I mean? It's the word, it's the word of God, right? The out of his mouth proceeded a two-edged sword. Have you, have you read that the book when they were describing him in the book of Revelation? Later on, after the, in that same season, when he just emerged from the marriage. Do you remember? They said out of his, he had a vesture dipped in blood. He had a name called the word of God. That was one, one thing. I don't know if it's that place, but somewhere they spoke about, maybe it's not there, but we know that out of his mouth proceeded what? A true word. A two-edged sword. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? So, they are just, the Holy Ghost is just trying, he's tying, he's tying realities in the spirit, using scriptures to, 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 to create relationship between them. Are you seeing that? So, so this grace that is poured upon thy, his lips is what? So they're just telling you that this sword, which he is, should guard upon his thigh, is actually a word which he has. Do you get what I'm saying? Amen. The word thigh symbolizes oath. Swearing in the Hebrew tradition, when they want to swear, he put my hand in my tie and they swear. You get what I'm saying? So the sword upon the tie is the word of oath by which they made, who made, the, they made the high priest, right? It was consec- high priest according to the word order of what? Melchizedek. Amen. Praise the Lord. So they, they made men high priest who had infirmity. But the word of oath maketh the son who is what? Consecrated forevermore. So this, the grace that was poured into his leaves is they were changing his word. That's his own word. The word which he uses is, is the grace. So it's, it's the grace of oath that came, which is the grace of God's life. Praise God. Don't be afraid of all these things. It's God's, the Lord speaking. I'm very sure of that. Amen. So he brought that to Jesus. You're seeing what Jesus acquired. Amen. So when I began to say, like, lift up your head, O ye gates, in that Psalm 24, back to Psalm 24. Do you remember? So because of standing in the holy place, because of standing in the holy place, then they now began to say, okay, that he shall receive. He that had clean hands and a pure heart, Psalm 24, Verse 4, he that had clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. So that word sworn deceitfully means that he has removed the, his tongue is a candidate for the grace that comes from the realm of oath. They check the tongue. It's not a deceitful tongue. They can pour grace into the, 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 into the lips, but you say the lips is the, is what, the, the lip is, the lip is a servant of the tongue. 
the, the, the lips shapes the speech of the tongue. It's, so praise the Lord. So when you say you poured grace into thy lips, when you pass in through the lips, into the lips, it's actually talking of the putting of grace on his tongue. Do you get what I'm saying? It didn't say grace is poured on thy lips. Into. It's into. It's talking about inside. It's the grace that is going inside. Amen. Praise the Lord. Poured into thy lips, right? It's, so if so what, anything that goes into your lips gets on your tongue. The tongue is the landing point for things that go into the lips. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Amen. So that, um, that word of oath, praise God, it, 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 it's, a, it's a season where it's time to change. The, the beings who are candidate of receiving the word of God and take unto you the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Any being who they will give the word of God must have gotten to a place where this one no longer swears deceitfully. Has not nor sworn, he has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor did what? Sworn deceitfully. Then he shall then receive blessing. So you see, this verse 5 is the same thing as Psalm 45 when talking about it happening to Jesus, was the same thing as verse chapter 2. Therefore, God has what? Blessed thee forever. So you see, grace, immediately grace is poor. That Time of when he became a candidate of grace being poured into his lips. At that time, amen, is also a time of everlasting blessing which God gave to him. So verse 5 of, of Psalm chapter 24, amen, says that he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and then righteousness from who? The God of his salvation. So you are seeing two things there. That, are, that ties into the two things we saw in, in Psalm 133. So it's very clear that blessing from the Lord is the blessing that is commanded. For there he commanded the blessing, right? Amen. And then righteousness from the God of the salvation. That thing called righteousness from the God of salvation is even life forevermore. Right, so righteousness from God is, is God's own kind of righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. You so saw it in Daniel where he was talking about the bringing in of what? Everlasting righteousness, which is so the everlasting righteousness is a righteousness from the God of salvation. He's talking about his own righteousness. It's not the righteousness of Christ which the children of men has. But when he has become fairer than the children of men, that fairness is fairness according to a higher righteousness. Is a candidate for a higher righteousness, which is what the, the righteousness of, of the God of his word, salvation. Then this is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Salah. Then he now began to say, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye what? Lifted up, ye what? Everlasting doors. And then the king of glory shall come in. So, of course, this king of glory is, the, is who they, spoke, they are speaking about in chapter 1 of, of, in verse 1 of chapter 45. When he was saying, praise the Lord, that my heart is indicting a good matter. And I, I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. Praise God. So this king, that which, when I say touching the king, is things which I have made concerning the king. He's talking about the meditations of my heart concerning this king. And of course, this king, they now began to describe him. And we see that the king is who? The king of glory. But who is this king of glory? Verse 8 asks the question of Psalm 24. Praise God. Psalm 24, verse what? 8 is asking who? Okay, now who is this king of glory? Who is he? Who is this king of glory? They say that he is the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Praise God. The Lord what? Strong and mighty. Then what? Mighty in battle. 
Then he said, lift up your head, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Then verse 10 said again. So they had to say it twice. It's just a rhetorical conversation. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Between whoever is, I don't know where it's coming from, but the gate is replying and saying back, praise the Lord. So he's saying that, who is this king? He's asking, he's asking question. And the response is first. So, so you see verse 8 is not the same thing as verse 10. So verse, the reply you see, I'm talking about two, his CV. There are two CV you must put together. That was, this is the thought of Psalm 24. It's laying two things side by side. Who will ascend into the hill? Who will stand? Two things side by side. He that has clean hand and has pure heart is following them. Then he will first of all receive blessing from the Lord, then righteousness from the God of his salvation. Are you seeing that? Then he's now beginning to now tell you about the pedigree. When they ask concerning him, they must ask twice. Because he has, there are two CV which he has. Who is, when, okay, who is this king of glory? Tell us about this king of glory. Who, what is, his, what is his qualification in the spirit? Why should these gates be lifted up? What is it concerning him? What about him should make these gates to be lifted up? They, are, they don't say, okay, we, the gate, they have to ask twice because there are two main qualifications. But they, from the... This, uh, from the from the praise the Lord, if the gate is asking, who is he? Means that the gate is high, is upward. So they have to speak about his qualification in a descending order. The first time we asked in verse 8, he said, This is the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty. So he's, he's now saying, This is the Lord, that he is a candidate, to, he, is, he is mighty. So, and those who are mighty, they stand where? In the congregation. He's a member, he's a candidate of the congregation of the mighty. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, he's the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in what? In battle. Praise God. Then verse 9 says, okay, lift up your head, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And then the king of glory shall come in again. They now say, who is this king of glory? They talk about his, the first qualification is the Lord of hosts. Uh, do you understand me? He's the word. He's the Lord of hosts. He is the word, king of glory. So you first, so you have to understand that this king of glory was first the Lord of hosts, right? Then after some time, he became the Lord strong and mighty, who is mighty in battle. Praise God. It was first the Lord of hosts, then he became what? The Lord strong and mighty. And so when you say the Lord of hosts, what's the meaning of that? Praise God. Can you tell me who is the Lord of hosts? Tell me what that qualifies quickly if you can. Say it again. The Lord of hosts is the Lord of a sanctuary. Tell me why, please. Because hosts are beings of a sanctuary. Okay. Tell me why. Why are, why are, why are hosts the beings of the sanctuary? I'm just going from, just using scriptural reference. Yes, sir. Um, Scriptures, yes. Um, it says, uh, just, um, you know, the devil, for example, the devil was saying that how he would ascend. Mm. Yeah, and it says uh, he would ascend, um, or they placed him over um, hosts. Okay. Yeah, so it, we just, um, through scriptures, we just know that that realm of hosts or mm. beings of Hosts are beings in the sanctuary. In the sanctuary. Yes, and the he's the Lord of them. So he's the Lord of, of beings in the sanctuary. I just want to know just the scripture so we have a, 
I think someone with three, right? Someone with three, yes. That's our. Uh, that's the yes. scripture we've been, we've been yes. jumping from. We've been yes. jumping from that scripture right? to, yes. to to fetch the understanding, strength, who hearkening to the commandments, hearkening unto the voice, the of voice of His word. word right. Yeah. They now say, "Bless you, the Lord, all ye His Minister, hosts, host, ministers, you ministers of His that do His pleasure." Yes. So, so His hosts are the those people in that second realm of heaven, which is the the hosts of the Lord are the, the occupants of Zion. So who they call the hosts. The ho- when they say the Lord of hosts, that was also, you see the same thing from the worship of the seraphims, right, in Isaiah chapter 6, right, uh, when they were speaking and, and, uh, concerning the Lord, they, were, they, they say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts of hosts, right? The Lord of hosts. So that's the worship of the, as he's their Lord. He's in the Lord of hosts. We are, they are his hosts. The seraphims are the hosts of heaven. Anytime you hear the hosts of heaven. The hosts, they are the people who host God. Do you understand that? They are the people who host God. It's very clear that his works in all places of his dominion can't host him. Because when they are, if they, you put them there, you cannot find God. You need after his works, there has to be then the, the, the next realm who will now host him. So who are the, what make them his host? The host of heaven is the place where God's feet where his foundation is. You said, you said that his foundation is in the holy mountain in, in Psalm 87, verse 1. Praise God in, in Psalm 87, verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. Prami kasho preto mehi alosika Glory to Jesus. He, said, he says that his foundation is where? His foundation is in the holy. When he says foundation, that word foundation actually means his host. Who is hosting him? Do you see that? So his foundation is where? In the holy mountain. The Lord loved the gates of Zion more than the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoke of the whole city of God. I will miss. So it's very clear when he said the gates of Zion. Praise the Lord. The gates of Zion. Then he's talking about the dwellings of Jacob. That God loved, loves the the the, the, amen, the, the gates of Zion, more than all the world, the dwellings of Jacob. So why is he talking about host of Zion, comparing host of Zion to dwellings? He's talking about if God, who, who will God choose? If the dwellings of Jacob say, God, we want to host you. And then the Zion say, we want to host you too. Who will God choose? It's very clear, Zion, because that's where his foundation is. That's where he can... He can be, he will be comfortable. That's where the foundation of God is. So that's where the, the word hosts come. An innumerable host of angels who God aligned in the second heaven. They are the beings of his pleasure. So it's very clear that God is hosted in the, in the mount, by the mountain of his pleasure. The, the mountain of his pleasure is the support for the realm of his presence. Yeah. yeah you, are you getting what I'm saying? I'm just talking about how you can host God. You don't, you have not seen that. You don't realize that's what I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you about all this revelation is that is God is, I want, I want to come to you. I want to come to you. I want to come to you. I want to come into your heart. How can I come to your heart? That's why they are talking about this foundation or this mountain, which they must be raised within your soul. Any soul that has, in whom this mountain has been raised in, has become a host for God. And God is looking for hosts on the earth. Men who can host him. Men who can carry his presence. Men who can carry the presence of God. To, to, be, to carry God's presence, God's presence can't just come on your baptism of the Holy Spirit alone. That is not enough to carry God. Praise the Lord. In other words, does his, his, 
Neither can your revelation knowledge alone carry his presence. Which when I say revelation knowledge, I'm talking more about your exploit in separation. Your devotion to, the, to, the, to accessing the revelation of God's economy and God's kingdom. That, that alone cannot host him. When you have that, they will commend you, that's good, that's good, that's good. I see it from afar, you are on the right track, you're doing something that's good. You've changed your, your occupation and your devotion. Now, can you, can you prepare, are you getting my, can you prepare the environment that can host me? Are you seeing that is the, that is the second heavenly nature which the soul must engage in the ministry of that second heavenly place so that when such a, an installation is in a person and it becomes full, then it becomes beautiful. So what, what is the meaning of out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined? What is the meaning of that? It means that that perfection of beauty, which is Zion, is a place that is hosting God. Where, where God is lodging, that's where he shines from. Praise God. You don't see that. There's a sense you need to know that the, the holy place is inside the court. And the most holy is inside the holy place. You have not seen it that way before. You, you just see it. I know it's good you see it as demarcation. But you don't know that it's embedded realms. This, if it's, you can't bring holy place and put it in someone's backyard and say, okay, in your backyard now, this is a holy place because you brought the, the cutting, you brought the rod, you brought, and then you brought the ark. It's not going to work. It can, that cannot be the holy place. The holy, is, the holy place is sensitive. There's a ground that it must be upon. It's a land. It's a, if it's not on that land which was given to the Levite, it can never work. It can never be a holy place. Are you, are you understanding what I'm trying to say? So that's what happened. If you try to build a temple outside a change of devotion or a change of occupation, so you say, no, I want to still be occupied with earthly things, but I, I want to build, be God's temple. Why being occupied with earthly things? They will say, no, sir. Please, it's not possible. It's not possible. You can't. If I thought you would be a temple, you'd be a temple for evil spirits. You can't. There's only, there's a land in the spirit which God's temple must be built upon. God's temple can only be built upon a separated land. So what does that mean? That just means that a mind that has not been captivated by Revelation, the kingdom revelation, that that mind can never carry, it can never be a building of temple in such a mind. You say, but I can do it now if your mind is full with other things or you come from time, I'm still, I still listen to message here and there, you cannot do it. You, you can't, by, no temple can be built by listening to message here and there. You find that you've listened to message here and there for 10 years and you're still the same. That there's nothing holy happening to you. There's nothing powerful. You're not attracting power. A test of power is ability to deny lusts and deny the world. Power. That's a sign that eh, you've touched power. When you can look at lust, say, I know you. I don't want you. That is powerful. Praise God. The lust and pride and all the glories of the earth. It's not easy to do that. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? So, are you seeing what I just described? Nobody can do that if, that's, if you've not come out from among them and been separate. How you be separate is that you take on another consciousness. Instead of paying attention to all these things, I must pay attention to what? The, the word of the kingdom. By doing that, you are separating out a land for God. You are saying, this land here, this one, I want to say. You, see, you know, you see the land of your heart. They don't want to erase all the things living there, drive out the inhabitant, the way, the way the Lord equipped Israel. 
to move into the promised land and drove out the inhabitants. Who are those people? It means that, that that land where the temple is built, originally, who, who knows what they were doing there before? But God equipped his people to, you must war, you must fight, you must fight to, to drive out that inhabitants of that land. And then they, so your heart should be the sep- first be a separated ground. Yeah. Ah, when that happens, you should be, you are, you've reached a blessed place. You see a heaven saying, good, 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 good. There are some of you that heaven is saying that about you. Yeah. You might be like, oh, well, uh, you know, you know we, Kai, we, I still have many problems. But when you check, they have been able to attain that land. You've been able to give heaven a land. So they have hope. Do you understand? How do you, how do you get land for heaven? It's by you, you shift inhabitants of your heart. You see all those devotion, all those thoughts, your meditation, what you delight in, what you focus in. Your mind, you shift them away. You clear the ground for the heaven. Lord, this is your Levitical land. Now, let's see how can you then institute your temple upon the land of my heart. Praise the Lord. Am I, am I saying something to you? So, all I'm just trying to tell you is that those realms of holiness, they are embedded within each other. Embedded. So, the land is, the holy place is inside the land of separation. And actually, the most holy is inside the holy place. Praise God. So that was why they would now say that out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, had what? Had God shined. Amen. Oh, glory to Jesus. Bless the Lord. Thank you. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So in that Psalm 24... So you're seeing that those two CVs, um, just looking at this awesome man, you're seeing that he has two CVs. First of all, he's the, he's the Lord of hosts, right? Now that Lord of hosts is the King of glory, and also the Lord was strong and what? And the Lord strong and mighty. Okay, let's, let's quickly just hop back to um, Psalm chapter, um, sorry. Amen. Where were we reading just now? Sorry, Psalm 45. The Lord we're indicting a good matter. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, so you, you, what you now see here, you see that the, so it says, when it said, thou art fairer than the children of men, grace is poured into thy lips, and then therefore God has blessed thee forever. And then verse 3, guard thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty, and then with thy glory and thy word majesty, and then in thy majesty, ride, word prosperously because of truth and meekness and, word righteousness, and thy right hand shall then teach thee, word terrible things. Verse 5, and thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. Then verse 6, now began to say, Thy throne, O God, is forever. And then the scepter of thy kingdom is what? A right scepter. Or the scepter of thy kingdom is a righteous scepter or is righteousness. So you're seeing that all this, this righteousness they're speaking of here is the righteousness from the God of his salvation. It's not the righteousness of Christ. Praise God. Amen. Uh, what is the, this, the righteousness from the God of his salvation? It says, thy throne, O God, is forever. And then the scepter of thy kingdom is what? A, a right scepter. Verse 7 quickly says that thou lovest what? Righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God thy God has done what? Anointed thee with what? The oil of gladness above thy what fellow. So, you now understand there that these, what 
God his God did to him is, is anointing him with an, with, with an anointing that is commensurate with his fairness. So how, how fair he is, is how anointed he is. Do you see that? You can, is that how, the, how fair he is, is how anointed he is. He must be, he must be anointed according to the measure of what is his fairness. So the one, and he said fairness is glory and what? Glory and beauty. So he's telling you that his anointing, the anointing of him is according to his, the measure of his glory and the measure of his beauty. We began to look at this, this subject last Wednesday, if you remember. We began to, through the book of Exodus, chapter 28, we, we, we saw the concept of, of how this God was giving instruction to Moses, he was saying unto him to, to take Aaron and his sons, praise God. And for Aaron and his, and his sons, we need to ensure that garments are made for them for what glory. Let's quickly read that place in, in Exodus chapter, chapter 28. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. <clears throat> Exodus 28, it says, and then, and take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother and his sons with him from among the world children of who of Israel that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And then even Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Itamar, Aaron's sons, and thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, for glory and for beauty. And then he's now saying, okay, this garment which is for glory. So, so you will say that, you can say that this making garment, God told them to make garments for them, for, to make him fair. To make them fair. That was what, to make them fair. And, and their, their fairness will be in degrees. Praise God. So they, and verse three, thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's word office. And he began to speak about the, all the things they have to make for Aaron. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Um. Thank you. Uh, this is too long. We cannot read all these things. So, let's see. Verse 2. Are you seeing that? Thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, for what? Glory and for beauty. So, from verse 3. All the way down, they are speaking about Aaron and his, all his garments. Are you seeing that? Then when it came to verse 40, he now said, And for Aaron's sons, thou shalt make coats, and thou shalt make for them girdles and bonnets, and, thou, and shalt thou make for them for glory. And for do and for what? And for and for beauty. Do you see that? So both for Aaron and for his sons, the garment which is made for them is for glory and for beauty. Now the what what produces what produced that garment is what they call here the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. Say spirit of wisdom. Spirit of wisdom. Aha. Uh-huh. So that Spirit of wisdom is what produces fairness. 
what produces fairness is what? The, the spirit of wisdom. Nothing can be fair without wisdom. Now, in other words, nothing can be beautiful and glorious without what? Without wisdom that is, or without wisdom that is the product of a spirit. Are you seeing that? Without what? Wisdom that is what? The product of a spirit. So, so the, if you have, if you call, if you give someone the spirit of wisdom, then, then you can say, this person has wisdom, or you can say, this person is anointed. Do you agree with me that, right? That, so, anointing means having spirit. Right? You, when you have spirit, you have an anointing. You have spirit. To be anointed means to have spirit. Now, there are different ways of anointing, and there are different spirits. There are different ways of having spirit, and there are different kinds of spirit. So, there are different anointings, and there are different ways of carrying the anointing. But, pr principally, when you say someone has spirit, it means that this person is what? Is anointed. Amen. So, so you can either say, this person has wisdom. You are also correct. And uh, so, in the scripture, it's interchangeable to say, this one has wisdom. I'm saying, this one is anointed. Do you get that? Now, because you are using the word has. That word has means he has it as an inheritance. He has it as a possession. Praise God. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So, wisdom, 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 amen. Now, we know that, and we've taught that wisdom is the principal thing, right? Wisdom is the word principal. So, wisdom means that which brings where other things flow from where other things come out from. Now, there, is, there are two kinds of um, spiritual wisdom, or wisdom above that is not earthly, from above the earth. There are two kinds of wisdom. There is the wisdom of Christ, and there is the wisdom of God. Right? Those are two what kind of wisdom. There are wisdom of Christ, and then wisdom of God. What I'm saying the wisdom of Christ is not the spirit of wisdom in the, according to the seven spirits of God. Amen. Amen. There is the spirit of wisdom and understanding or the spirit of wisdom and revelation. But then there is what you call somebody so it's the, now, now, now you have the Holy Spirit as an entity who, when you find him as an instructor within the sanctuary, as demonstrating as seven spirits who can instruct men, that's the Holy Spirit who is displaying himself in seven attributes or seven attribute spirits of the Spirit of the Lord. That's who? Holy Spirit. That's Holy Spirit. Then you can now say, as, apart from this Holy Spirit, who demonstrates as seven, you now look at a person and say, this one has the spirit of wisdom. Then they later qualified it, wise-hearted. It's not, so if a man is wise-hearted, he's not talking about the spirit of wisdom which is the Holy Spirit, which is part of the attribute spirit of the Spirit of the Lord in the Holy Spirit. He's talking about what is an inheritance which that being has become. Right? You say this person is wise-hearted. So when you say someone is wise-hearted, it means that they have wisdom. You also mean that they are anointed. You cannot separate those things. Praise God. So in this place, he's saying that those who I have few, let's quickly read that in Exodus chapter Oh, glory to Jesus. Thank you, Father. Exodus 28, it says, And, and thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted, 
whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. So those who are wise-hearted are those who have been filled with the word, with the spirit of when time you hear the word filled, you mean not that they have been ministered to by the spirit of wisdom, it's that they have been filled. So you, when you say you feel something, it means you pour it inside. You can't, you can't be carrying something and say that, no, I have filled that with it. If it's with you, you haven't filled it. You haven't to, to feel it, something with it, means you, that thing you're carrying changed its position. It actually left and it, it went into another entity and it was able to stay there. Do you get what I'm saying? So these beings who are, who are wise-hearted uh, is talking about stature of the spirit. So when you hear spirit of wisdom, it's not always just talking about the seven spirits of God. There is what you call the spirit of wisdom which reside in the heart that make the soul wise-hearted and when somebody has the spirit of wisdom, you say, this person actually is what? Is anointed. Now, as the principal thing, the Bible says that Christ is made unto us wisdom. There, there is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 at the end, right? of chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians. Very quickly, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. The Lord is imparting things to us. Amen. amen. But you know, life feast impartation is different. It's impartation through teaching and through understanding. Amen. So, so there are these things that if this understanding can be crystallized in you. It will just change your... It will tamper with some... There will be something that cannot sit inside you together with this understanding. That is like, ah, this understanding. Understanding is too powerful. Understanding can cast out evil spirits. Yeah. Evil spirits that torment you, you just understand. Hey! The spirit will just come. It will just jam an understanding. Yeah, we can no longer... This, there's no longer understanding fill of space. So by wisdom and house is built. By what? Understanding what happened is established. So that the establishment of a house means that when a house has been established, it can't, there's nothing you can do anymore. It's not, um, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Then by knowledge is its word. Its rooms are filled with what? Huh? All precious what? <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So when spirits come to the... When, you see spirits that always come. You know, spirits have... They, they pump suggestion. And a lot of times, suggestion is not just thought. It can, it's just something that you, you soul in what man will just pick it up. And before you know it, you're acting in, in line with it because it's, it's spiritual. It's quick. You cannot intercept it. It's hard to intercept. That's why it's not everything that you are tempted with that you have the time to say, should I do or not? No. A lot of times there are impulses. You live by impulses. And those impulses are quick because they are, they are, they are fired by spirits. So we just fire things from their nature into our, our being and we begin to act and begin to do all kinds of things. Praise God. But there's a way that the spirit, when it's coming, it's trying to land. You find out that that space, which is nobody lands in, is because there was a gap in that space. So that's what gave him a landing point. But after a while, he can understand him, will fill it up. See that, that? When it's now coming, the spirit will jam an understanding. Hey! Because when the understanding is there, there's no longer space for that kind of thought. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Huh? There was a time that the people thought the world was flat. When they discovered the world was round, there's no longer space for men. To, to, to believe that the world is flat anymore. Do you, you get what I'm trying to say? And for, for many of us, we have many of those things. That we, you strongly were your things that were your reality before, but one day, hey, you just see, wow, not be so this thing, Bill. <laughs> By the time you just see that thing, this is not, what has happened? A door has been sealed forever. 
you can never come back to that state again where you live as though it was that way because an understanding has, has come into the heart to seal that place. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, so all these things, well, the things, you don't know which spirit the, what you are learning is resisting. You don't know. You actually don't know. You don't know. You don't know these thoughts that are, the Lord is teaching us. To you, it's just because we don't have use for them in our normal life. It doesn't mean that they are worthless. These are great pearls. For to find a soul in whom this knowledge sits in, it's a, it's, you are a treasure. You are, you are a container of precious things upon the earth. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? But it's like you don't know that just knowing what you're knowing today, you don't know that because of this knowledge, you don't know what evil spirits can no longer land anymore. That's why you see how your change happens. You can't tell when you changed. It's when you now look back, you now realize there are some things that you normally do. How many of you know that? How many of you, every single thing that you've changed, you've changed out of, you calculated that you know the exact day that change happened? Tell me. Raise up your hand if you're like that. Because if you're like that, it means you must be very slow. <laughs> very slow. You know why? Because you see how heaven is full of multitude of angels and beings. That's how their natures are in multitude. They can't number them. And, and that's how they fill us with things. So if they have to, you have to think about all your weaknesses one by one. Say, okay, today I won't do this. And that's why you will be too slow. That's why they use this kind of method. A lot of it is why you are asleep. By sleep, I don't mean you are physically sleeping. I mean why your conscious mind is sleeping. Right? You don't, your consciousness is not, is not aware. They can pump things inside you that is fighting war against Satan. You can be walking around in the supermarket. A revelation that was inside you is making war against impulses of spirit, fighting war against suggestions. Thoughts that can no longer lie. You know, thoughts are evil birds. Birds that are that defiled. You know, they always land upon heart and upon the mind and thoughts. But after a while, have you noticed some, there's some, how many of you have experienced that some thoughts that always occur to you, you fight every day after some time, you just know. You wonder, where is that thought? You actually forget it. You actually forget. Where did the thought go? Something made war with it. Something entered you. That's one thing. That's why we must be highly smart with the ministry of revelation. Don't come to the gate and look at it and go away. Say, because this has no meaning to me. You don't understand. You don't understand that the, 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 the level of your problem is not in your conscious mind. <laughs> if it was in your conscious mind, then Christianity would be very different. With the root of where, where this thing, our problems are buried, they're deep, deep within the invisible waters of our soul. Waters of our soul that, that pollutions have been poured into. How can you do such a thing? How can you purify the waters of a man's heart? You must, you must, you must be able to introduce a, another chemical that can, that can react molecule by molecule. Many of you, when you see a chemical reaction, you can see all the molecules, what they are doing. But when you are titrating, after a while, you just say, it just turns red. Why did it turn red? How did all the molecules agree to turn red? You don't know, but you just saw the color. But you don't know that when you can actually do the calculation, that one hydrogen plus one chloride, when you're doing titration, it's an acid. Let's say you're doing hydrochloric acid, you're trying to titrate a base with sodium hydroxide, with what hydrochloric acid to give you salt and water, you know, the molecules, you can do the, the calculation on paper, but you can't see how it's occurring. That's the same way we can read the, the, the revelation and ingest it, but, but molecule by molecule is dealing with sin and, and dismantling the installation, praise the Lord, of what God has done. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. So he's saying that Christ is made unto us, first of all, wisdom. That's the first thing. So it's very clear that this wisdom, sorry, this first Corinthians, yes, verse 30, but of whom are ye in, in Christ? So and it's a lot of times in the scripture when they put the word Christ before Jesus, normally it's Jesus Christ. Jesus, the anointed one, Jesus Christ. So a lot of time when they say Jesus Christ, they're talking about the person. 
just that man, Jesus Christ, Jesus who became the Christ. But when they are now saying Christ Jesus, Paul uses that a lot, is that he's now saying the anointed one who is Jesus. They are not the same. When they say Jesus who is the anointed one, they are talking about Jesus, but he's anointed. That's it's Jesus. But when they now say the anointed one who is Jesus, they identify him too. But it means that what he wants to talk about a lot of times is actually about the anointed image, the anointed nature in him. So most times when they say Christ Jesus, since we already know who Christ is, we can still remove the Jesus at the end and just say Christ. Praise God. So what they are saying here is that the stature, the image called Christ, right, who of God of God is made unto us wisdom. So when they're saying that, ah, he's been made unto you wisdom, they're not talking about the spirit of wisdom and revelation. He's talking about the stature of wisdom which they've given to you as what an inheritance. So wisdom then and righteousness and then what? Sanctification and what? And redemption. Okay. This is everything here is all wisdom. Now, can you, are, you, are you seeing what I'm saying? Are you seeing my sense of what I'm seeing? It's all wisdom. But when you're saying it's wisdom, then I began to add and. And so it's wisdom. If you separate wisdom, you will now see that the other things they mention are the, the, the journey of all wisdom brought. Right? It's the progression of what? Of the dividend of wisdom. First, righteousness. Then there's righteousness, which is not yet sanctified. It's very clear, this righteousness here, without sanctification. Righteousness without sanctification is separation. Do you see that? That, that first righteousness there, you cannot call it sanctification. Amen. Amen. Then that sanctification, like when they were describing the kingdom, it says first righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So you're seeing righteousness that becomes sanctified. Then it is sanctification that opens the door of redemption. Are you seeing that? There's, there's, there's redemption. Redemption are in two phases. <laughs> there is the Full and total redemption, which is by the time the soul has come into eternal life. That is the full redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. That redemption is when the, God has fully redeemed the soul. That what redeemed is, is now his. Finally, so to redeem something means to take it as yours. You take it back as yours. Do you see that? Now, you now see that God has actually, there's actually two main points of redemption. There is first of all, what you call the redemption from among men. Do you see that? And that's the book of Revelation chapter 14. When they were describing the Zionites, or the, those who were upon the mountain, the 144,000, that those who are, who are 144,000, they are those beings who have been able to stand. Those who stand in the holy place, right? He said, and I looked and Apollo upon Mount Zion stood at 144,000. They were not sleeping, lying down, they were standing. Because what, that's what you do in that place. You, you, that, you, you go there to stand. Are you understanding my point? So those men who were standing upon Mount Zion, who were standing there, who upon Mount Zion, a hundred and f- the Lamb with a hundred and forty-four thousand of his saints. So, the land standing upon Mount Zion with a hundred and forty-four thousand. They now began to describe them later. Say these are those who are redeemed from the earth. 
They are redeemed from the earth. Then he described them, they are redeemed from among men. Do you see that? Redeemed from a what? Redeemed from where? Among men now. Being redeemed from among men is not the final, the full and total redemption. Being redeemed from among men is the first redemption of God. What does redeem mean? To, to take it as your own, to take it. So there is a time when God will eventually take man, take man to reign with him. That is the, that's to, he will take man into his eternal reign. That's the final redemption. When that happens, then that's man has redemption, has finished. We've gotten to our end destination. God, we, 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 will move, we have moved into God. Right, we moved into God. That's fully redeemed by God. But God must redeem twice. God must first redeem to train. He must first redeem. So to redeem a man, God cannot redeem a man from among men into his eternal realm. Because when someone has been redeemed from among men, and now what being redeemed from among men is, what makes you redeemed? Because you become fairer than the children of men. You've, you've come to a place of fairness above men. It's by a heightening of beauty and a heightening of glory that does that. Amen. So when a soul has been redeemed from among men, they, now they, they are redeemed to stand in the presence of God. In that presence, also you are redeemed into God's presence for development by God. Then God develops the soul for the full and total redemption, which is redeeming souls back to His eternal life. Is what is um, praise God, His eternal life. Do you understand what I mean? So now there is a redemption which Christ has been made unto us, which is the end dividend of Christ. So. This redemption that Christ has been made to us is the, is the final redeemed state that Christ, it's like, it's, it's what Christ wants to push you into. It's a journey. It's actually dealing of wisdom. When they want to install wisdom, statue of wisdom inside a person, is to first of all make you righteous, make you sanctified. And then be, make you redeemed. So, so Christ is Christ is the redeeming tool. Is the, Christ is the tool of the first redemption. The lamb is the tool of the second redemption. That's why when Christ produced the 144,000, he, he pushed them into the company of their final redeemer. That was why they stood with the lamb. The lamb is actually, the, is the, the lamb is the, is the being who is configured with the step of, of the, with the redemptive step. Redemptive step in the presence of God. Every step of the lamb in God's presence is redemptive. So thou hast redeemed us by thy blood out of all. Kindred. Now, that redemption by his blood is talking about the blood of the lamb, which is by which we are redeemed. Do you get what I'm saying? The blood, first, you must first be redeemed by the blood of Christ. Then after that, there's what you call the redemption by what? The God, by the blood of the Lamb. Am I getting some sense? Are you getting some sense of the scriptures? Praise the Lord. So just what I want, want to tell you is that, is that Christ, you see that righteousness, sanctification, and then what? Redemption is what is all wisdom. That's just the, that's the main thing. What Christ has been made unto of God is made unto us is wisdom. The, all those and they are asking, they are saying it's not necessarily that, it's the, that the other things are different from wisdom. It's just trying to lay out all the things right that that wisdom. When you see ah man, you are wise. Oh. The first the first touch of wisdom is, is righteous. Somebody who, nobody can have righteousness without wisdom. Is a righteousness. They now say, they now say sanctification is also a wisdom. 
And then redemption is also what? A wisdom. Are you seeing what I'm trying to say? Praise the Lord. So um, this wisdom here is the is also an anointing. It's an inward inheritance of spirit. That's the best way to describe what is wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is not wisdom is not laws or rules or wisdom. Wisdom is wisdom is that thing which brings answer. Do you understand you know what I mean? Wisdom is spirit. Wisdom is what? It's spirit. Wisdom is spirit. It's the anointing, that wisdom is the, is the inward inheritance of spirit. It's the, it's the marriage of the fabric of the heart to spirit. When the fabric of the heart marries spirit nature, it amount to wisdom stature. It's from such formation that righteousness spring. Righteousness spring forth from wisdom, from stature of any being. Nobody can be righteous without wisdom. I'm talking about spiritual righteousness. Righteousness that counts before God. Do you understand? <laughs> Are you saying that? So change your... So I say, this is a righteous man. Don't think of a oh, guy that's just every time just calm. He only eats carrots and he doesn't drink pop or juice. He only drinks water. Are you seeing that kind of thing? Someone can be like that but not be wise. It means that, that when he's, he's like that to devotion and everything, but spirits have their way when they come around him. They will, you see that holy, pious man, when spirits come, he will finish doing everything, everything that spirit wants. Evil spirits. He's not, he doesn't have the, he doesn't have the inward facility to break the wind of spirits. It's not easy to stop wind though. It's not easy to stop wind. Anything that can stop wind must be tight. To actually, to actually stop the wind. To be honest with you, the, to, to, to really calm the wind and to, to stop the tempest of the wind, you must not be breakable. Or let me use the right word. You must not be brittle. Right? Brittle means something that can snap. It can snap. When you see a wall like that, it can snap. You just need the right force. You just need the right amount of force. It can, anything that is rigid can snap. Anything that is rigid can break. Do you get what I'm saying? Right, what? That's why... The soul must be what? Flexible. What is the flexibility of the soul? It's wisdom. What is wisdom? Spirit. It's spirit nature. It's from such nature you see righteous. You just see a being is defeating sin every time. Every time. Spirits will become baffled. They will wonder what kind of thing is this? Like imagine Jesus of Nazareth. Just a young boy like what? Why can't you do what other young boys do? What? Why? Because something was happening to him. Something, they, were, they were training, 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 training was, was. It's very clear to you that Jesus Christ was filled with wisdom before the you see baptism of the Holy Ghost. Do you agree? Are you seeing that? That when I say filled with wisdom, I mean his heart. They were, they were, they were, he was undergoing through training 
right from when he was young to make him wise hearted. It's not one day, it wasn't that he appeared in Jordan, Holy Ghost came and he now began to talk with wisdom of the Spirit or began to act. With the, you know, the, it took him decades for them to create the fabric of wisdom. That spiritual uh, nature that can, you, you see Jesus, they are, they are talking to him, he, he will be catching thought. Hey. Catching thought. He can, he can discern them. They are naked. Who, because of the dexterity of his inward nature, he's able to, he's not, he, praise the Lord. You know all those questions of Pharisees, they are meant to break him. But, but rather, when, when they throw it at him, he will catch it. When they were trying to, to make him fall, when they brought the woman caught in adultery, all those things they were doing is, if you bring, bring a, a brittle, a straight, hard man, and then put him in that situation, he will fail woefully. He will fail woefully. He will fail woefully. He will not know what to do. He will not, he's not able to extray the spirit import of their their question, their conversation. It will be too, his mind will be too possessed with doing the right thing. You, you see that thing? Doing the right, no, 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 this is right. This is right, this is the right thing. She fornicated, she did adultery. You see that thing? That thing, that thing is not righteousness. Righteousness is a righteousness comes out of the fountain. It fountains from wisdom. That's why they say that the zeal of man walketh not the righteousness of God. He walketh not the righteousness of God. It's what you call the righteousness that is of faith. Faith is, is spirit. Faith is spirit. Faith is spirit. Faith is faith. faith. Touch. So righteousness is of faith. Faith is substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. So it means that when you, 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 you ask a question, a, a moral question to a man of faith, it doesn't, it doesn't calculate, it doesn't, that, that, the answer doesn't bounce back out of his rigid moral wall. But rather, he takes that question, he moves it into the unseen. Do you get what I'm saying? And then he will, he will query the unseen for an answer. That is spiritual wisdom. That was how Jesus was. It's very clear that Jesus' thought was different. He was pulling things from another, from another place. Praise God. Do you get what I, I said to you? Yeah, so, now this wisdom are in two categories. Two. It's very clear the wisdom I'm talking about now. There are two categories. I mean, wisdom of nature. There are two. There is the wisdom of Christ and the wisdom of God. They're not the same. There's the wisdom of Christ first, and then what? There is the wisdom of Christ. So, there is the, the wisdom of Christ is the, is the product of the anointing, of the crystals, the anointing. It's also like an oil. Right? It's, an, it's an oil, but it's an oil of nature. Hey, you can see this thing. Anointed nature different from just Holy Ghost upon you and speaking in tongues. Spirits don't fear that one too, because you know that, you know that you're speaking in tongues will stop at one point. They'll just wait for you to stop. Nobody can speak in tongues forever. You, praise God. Then when you finish speaking in tongues and everything, they know, they know where you're going to land. They know you're going to land back inside your nature. So they come to your nature and wait for you. They will, you, you can go and do your sick speaking in tongues and then after you la breaka pa ye when you finish you will eat up everywhere fire everywhere with tongues they know that you can't they know you can't that inside that 
anointing, you, you, you know, fire, you breathe it out. You know you can open it and stay inside. You know that after a while you will land back inside your nature. So that's why they come and wait for you. So God, Jesus knows that. God the Father knew that. So that's why he didn't bother about that first, that one, a lot first, with for Jesus. But rather for decades they were working on his anointed nature. How they made the Christ, the Christos. It took time. They were working in, they were sowing anointed nature inside of him. Teaching him how to, how to think like a spirit. How to, how to act like a spirit. How to judge like a spirit. How to walk like a spirit. To live like a spirit. They were pouring and rubbing out. They were massaging oil inside his spiritual brain cells, inside his spiritual thinking and logic. They were tearing it and dividing it. The men think this way. You, you must think differently. They were pouring oil into his nature. So it's very clear. Jesus, you know, so Jesus' thought can, can deal with spirit. It's not by prayer and everything. It's just... Do you know how many, how many, de- de- I want to ask you a question. How many devils were Pharisees possessed with? Huh? That's just demons. Not, I'm not talking about the spirits controlling them. Do you think it's easy for you to speak to a Pharisee and then when you finish talking, he doesn't have answer? Do you know what kind of being that is? That when you finish, they didn't have answer. It means that what you said was able to seal the lips of the spirit that talked through them. They're not just the ones who talk. It's all the spirits that talk. Imagine, so imagine what kind of, what manner of man was Jesus? Who can have conversation with spirits? And when you finish talking, they don't have anything to say. It wasn't only just after a while the apostles, they all behaved, became like that. He said that when Paul said they couldn't resist the wisdom with which he spoke. It wasn't that is not anointing. No, that's not he's talking about maybe just normal light, just drinking tea. So you said that what were you talking about? And then they're just gisting. And then arguing. Wow. You see, they couldn't resist the wisdom with which, with which he spoke. It was, it was the, it's the fountain. The waters of his, of his heart had been. Are you get what I'm saying? It's, it's anointing. I mean, it's oil flowing actually inside of him. His, his thoughts are so spiritual. They are so tight and so sharp. So much weight and so much judgment in the thought. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So I see there are, I said there are two wisdom. There is the wisdom of who? Of Christ. And then there is what? The, the wisdom of God. So it's then also clear that there is the spirit of Christ. And then there is the spirit of God. Right? Which is, by spirit I mean the anointing. And the anointed nature. We're talking about the. Hmm. Glory to Jesus. That one's love righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, even like God, has anointed you with the oil above what? Above, oh no, thy fell. So you see, oil of gladness is not just, it is, to, so this, it means that the presence of God is the school of gladness. It's, is is the school of an oil. It's the school of an anointing. 
You don't you see that. You know, they call him Christ, the anointed one. You see, ah, he's the one. No, no, that's, that's the beginning of anointedness. It's just, Christ is the, it's just the first anointed thing. It's, Christ is actually the, the foundation anointing. Everything after Christ is anointing. Can, you, can anyone be as anointed as God who sits upon the throne? How anointed is he? They now say that God is spiritual. That you, you can't, the way he is, you must not add anything to that qualification. God is not spiritual. Christ is spiritual. You won't hear Christ is spirit. No. Christ is the spiritual man. He's spiritual. But they say God is spirit. Do you know what that means? It's not just oil on top of him. It's not, God is not someone that, ah, he's anointed though. He has to always walk in his anointing. That's not how God is. He's talking about God is. And then they that worship him must worship him in, in, in spirit and in truth. So that the realm of, of, of spirit, where that kind of worship occurs, is the, is, also, is the school of his oil. That school of his oil is actually this, is the school of gladness. So when you see the word gladness, gladness is the anointing of, of beings who are fairer than men. It's not just, you know, that's what we call the oil of joy for mourning. That is, that oil of joy is actually the, the Christ kind of oil. But God is also joy because when there was the meaning of that in his presence is fullness of joy, then his right hand then what? Pleasures forevermore. You get what I'm saying? So that word, his presence is fullness of joy. He's telling you that God's whole presence is full, is joy. Everything about there is his school of joy. You see that? That's the best way to describe that school. He said that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's first righteousness, then peace. And then finally, joy in the Holy Ghost. So they call that whole world of God, the world, the world of joy. But it's not just an ordinary joy. It is joy that is mighty. The joy of an ordinary man or, of, or an ordinary being is not the same joy of a mighty being. There is the, the joy of might. That is another joy. You know, you know, they said the joy of the Lord is your strength. So in the holy place, in Christ, joy translates to strength. It's called the strength of Christ. Christ is actually this kind of strength. That is the joy of the Lord. It's strength. But there's what you call the joy of God. The joy of God is might. Do you get what I say? The joy of what? The joy of, 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 of God is might. And that word for might is strength of excellency. Bless you is, is angels who excel in strength. They have excellent strength. Strength that excels. Say, guide your soul upon your thigh, oh, most mighty. That word is not just strong, it's strong and mighty. The Lord strong and mighty. Mighty in battle. You don't understand. You know how they war in that world? The war with joy. It's, the, it's, it's not just any kind of war. It's not just joy. They war with gladness. The, the, the gladness is, hey. <laughs> That's the realm all together. Yeah, some of, some, a type of that thing is where, where you see, you know, a, a strength of, of an army is not in the muscle, it's in their song. Mm. 
That's how you actually know the strength of an army. When you see an army, they are not singing too well. Why? They still have, they, have not, they are not dead yet. Dead men sing. Because they have no care anymore. When they are dead, so, so battle is, is party, is gyration. Battle is... They've passed the threshold of caring for their life. That, that burden of my me, myself, that burden of, of you, know that, you know that thing keeps you. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. It's, that's the, the reason Zion is to take that thing away. Zion should work on you until you are able to turn mourning into joy and, and then you produce beauty for ashes. Those kind of beings, uh, they don't say, okay, when you become like that, hey, they see fairness. You know, ugliness is caring for your life. We say, hey, that guy thinks of himself too much. He's too ugly. It makes you ugly. Thinking of yourself makes you ugly in the spirit. When a fair man in the, in the spirit is a man who has left himself behind. Those are... Those are mighty men, like, like David. Have you, have you read about the mighty men of David? They began to describe those. Those guys are ordinary beings. <laughs> there was a time when two of them, was it two of them? David just said, ah, if all that one will give me water to drink from the well, he just described the well was in the garrison of the Philistines, where all their warriors are. There was a well there. And he didn't, he didn't send them a message. He didn't ask them questions. He just, just said, oh, that somebody will do that. You know, you know that wishful thinking? I wish someone would just grab me a drink. Those dead men woke up. <laughs> they said, ah! The king had just sent us on a stroll. I mean, their life meant nothing to them. They went into the, broke into the camp of the enemy just to go and fetch a cup of water. Those are not ordinary men. So when you read those men of Divi, you know that those are not just strong men. They are mighty. They say through just one of them, his fling of his sword, how many people did he kill? That thing beats normal imagination. No, Holy Ghost must have done those things with those men. To, it's a type of something. To be a mighty man of David. Who is David? David is the heir of the throne of God. That's a, it's called the throne of David. So David's mighty men are they are, they are men who, <laughs> praise the Lord, they are, they are not babies, praise the Lord. They are, they are beings who war with, with gladness. They war with gladness. It's a higher strength. But before you can come into gladness, you must learn the realm of what? That, that first realm, you must learn the first anointing. You must master the first anointing. So, before your strength will be made excellent, you have to first renew your strength. Who renews their strength? They that do wait upon the Lord. Zion is the mountain of waiting upon the Lord. For what? The renewer shall renew, shall renew their strength. Thank you, Jesus. I've seen the Lord imparting spiritual strength. Amen. Into you, in I, I mean real strength too. Yeah. I don't mean that you're flexing of your right, your moral muscles and trying to be good. I'm talking about strength, 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 strength that comes from above. I'm talking about strength that is generated by a wise out of a wise heart. The, the deposit of the spirit within the heart, the, the giving of the spirit of wisdom, the, the infilling of the stature of wisdom that will produce strength. Just begin to talk to the Lord. And I'm not giving you a prayer point. However, this message just spoke to you and turn it into a quest of your heart. Oh, 
mama i cresco te livre ndo hanoha manta ta e creto pa cresca pona greta gesco lampa mama hope oste creco cona cresce ah ma ha 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 ma se 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 beligama ole gege melita lembral de sada lombrona mon dreshke malu Oh, Mahaso, 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 Oh, Mahaso, 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 Labre, Kakelim, Roske, Lim, Roske, Atabrasya, Mahate, Disco, Oh, Merenoste, Kante, Lim, Grante, Tezo, Sestum, Brebo, Londi, Griata, Oh, Oh, thank you, Jesus. Ah, Marikaskori and Arodomos Kerioski. Le Protemengres Karabaturiha. Le Pramahata. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you. Omre Katahano. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh Lord, you've heard the cry of our heart, responding, responding with quest, Lord. We're just responding to your thoughts, your righteous, holy, beautiful thoughts. So you know the thoughts you have towards us, they're thoughts of good. These are thoughts of good, not of evil, to bring us to an expected end. Father, may this end not elude any of us. May no one miss the dividend, the blessing, the actual allocation of these things, the, the rotting out, the, the bringing about of this great blessing within our soul, within our frame, within our nature, Lord. I pray, distribute these dealings, Lord, to every heart. Distribute these dealings to every soul, to every soul, to every soul. Everyone under the sound of my voice, I pray, God, distribute it. All the, the dealings, the training, the school that will bring about this anointed nature, this inheritance of wisdom of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you because the priestly doors are open. These priestly gates are open even to our soul. And we will walk in. We will take our possession. Thank you. You've not called Jacob to seek you in vain. He said, upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. There shall be holiness, and the sons of Jacob will possess their possession. We will possess it. Thank you, our Father. We give all the glory to your name. Let's just thank God. Just thank the Lord. I want you to thank God and just merenosk. Receive with thanksgiving now. When you thank Him, you are saying, Lord, it is done. I have I have received it. This blessing will not go, it won't evaporate. But Lord, I trap it and I receive it with thanksgiving. We receive it with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. The doors to these things are open, even within our soul. Thank you, our Father. We give you all the praise, O oh Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.